All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Hey, this is the day that the Lord have made, and I will rejoice and be glad to in it. Good morning to you, and thank y'all so much for tuning in. Uh, the in the backyard with Pastor Perry, man. Hey, I am actually in our backyard, but uh, our grass is a little bit wet. I've been trying to get the uh, sprinkler system to work properly, so uh, hey, I had to, I'm, I'm in the backyard, but I'm under our uh, pergola or gazebo, whatever you want to call it. So that's where I am right now. So, but anyway, good morning to everybody. Thank y'all so much for coming on in and being a part of this. Shout out to Miss Sykes. Shout out to Miss Hines, who's on today. Shout out to my wife, Pastor Sophia. Shout out to Miss Jennifer Smith, who's on today. Velo Wright is on this morning. Shout out to you, man. Good to see you, my brother. Hey, shout out to Miss Karen Yates. Shout out to Miss Shirley Powell. Shout out to uh, 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 Miss Tiffany Barnes. Elbert Coleman III is on today. Shout out to you guys. Thank y'all so much for tuning in today. Make sure y'all share, y'all like, y'all tag, y'all invite. Start a watch party. Get other people to come on and be a part. This morning, in the backyard with Pastor Perryman. Today is a beautiful day. It's an exciting day. It's a lovely day. So good to see everybody on this morning. Shout out to my son, Darius Buckley, who's on this morning. Good to see you. Shout out to Miss Shamika Nicole. I mean, I'm sorry, Miss Shamika Shemika Bogart is on this morning. Shout out to you. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. Listen, y'all do me a favor. Y'all share, y'all like, y'all tag, y'all invite. Start a watch party. Get on. Get other people to come on and be a part this morning. Hey, let's have a great time in the Lord. I got my coffee this morning that my wife made. So listen, get your coffee, your water, your juice, your tea, whatever you drink, and get it this morning. Let's have a great time uh, in the Lord. Again, I am in the backyard, but I'm just under our, I guess, whatever you call it, gazebo pergola, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so, but anyway, we get ready to get into it. So let me have some of this amazing coffee my wife made, and then we're going to get into it. All right. Shout out to Jackie Nelson. Shout out to Miss Kelly Johnson, who's on today. Good to see you guys. So again, share, like, tag, invite. Start a watch party, get other people to come on and be a part of In the Backyard with Pastor Perryman. So let me drink this coffee, we're going to get to it. This coffee is good, it's saved. <laughs> Shout out to Miss Willis Francis Hill, who's on today as well. Good to see you, thank you so much for tuning in. Let me get into it. You know, this was a really a difficult subject for me really to talk about today. Uh, it's actually been on my list to speak about for the last six months. Uh, but what I've been doing is pushing it back and pushing it back and pushing it back. Um, to be honest with you, uh, not knowing how to really convey it um, the way it should be conveyed so it wouldn't be misconstrued. But I decided this morning that today is the day for me to just go for it and just to put it out here. Because it's really something that a lot of people in the body of Christ are dealing with. A lot of people, we should say in general, is dealing with so I laid myself bare out here today uh, because I think transparency is what's going to get other people's lives transformed and changed. When I went through a divorce from my first wife, went through a divorce, it was tragic on me, difficult on me. It was hard on me. Uh, Y'all heard my testimony about how silence was king in my house. But the other thing that I hadn't counted on was my flesh acting up. So here I am, I'm a minister in the church, but I got these fleshly desires, these flesh problems. I can't get this flesh body under control. I can't get my thoughts right. I can't get my mind right. God has called me to pastor. I know I gotta go through the steps and go through the process before I become a pastor, but I don't have this flesh body under control. Every night I'm losing control and I'm losing my mind because if I don't get some sex, I'm gonna go crazy. I'm gonna go crazy. And here I am, how do I, how do I overcome this? I'm battling shame, I'm battling frustration, I'm battling embarrassment. I'm not addicted to pornography because I wasn't watching it. But, but here I am, I don't have this companionship. And now what do I do? I'm struggling, I'm struggling, I'm struggling, and I can't seem to get out of this thing. And so here I am, I'm asking God to help me. I'm asking God to help me. I'm saying to God, if you don't help me, I'm going to do some stuff that is going to make us look bad. It ain't going to just make me look bad, but it's going to make us look bad because I got, I'm wearing your name. It's going to make us look bad. And so here I am. I don't have this thing under control, so I got to go to war. I got to wage warfare against it, against my flesh to get it under control. And so I wage warfare. I'm listening to tapes. I'm listening to messages. I'm praying. I'm fasting. I'm taking cold showers, but... This thing ain't really working like it's supposed to. 
And then I get bold enough to ask God to give me a wife. I said, because if you don't give me a wife, I'm going to mess up some stuff. I'm going to mess it up. I'm going to mess it up for me, and I'm going to mess it up for you. I need your help. So here I am. I'm holy, but I'm horny. And, and, and I, know, I know for some church people, this is a taboo subject. They don't like to touch. They don't want to talk about it. But there are a lot of people in the body of Christ today who are in our churches, who are holy, saved, sanctified, that with fire, speaking tongues, preaching the pulpit, singing on the church, singing the church, praise and worship team, usher, do all of this thing, come to church, bring their tithes and offerings. But they're holy and they're horny. And for some of them, they've been dealing with this thing. It's been a mind thing for them for a while. How, how do I get past this, Pastor? How do I... How do I break free? I don't know who to talk to about it because if I if I talk to this person about it in the church, my business may be over here. It may be over there. How, how do I get past this? I'm holy, but I'm holy. How do, how do I get past this thing? And I came this morning to be able to talk to you and explain to you how you can get past this. The first thing that you have to understand now is that lust is prevalent. Lust is all over the world. It's, it's, lust is not just a sexual thing, but lust is having evil longings and evil cravings and evil desires for that which is not in the will of God for you. So now that means now you can be lusting to be uh, this person or that person. In reality, God called you to do something else. That could be lust. It's not just a sexual problem, but it's you having evil longings and evil desires and evil craving for that which is not in the will of God for you. So watch now, in order for me to get in line with God, in order for me to get right with God, guess what I'm going to have to do? I'm going to have to long for the things that he created me for. So when I'm not longing for the things that God has created me for, then now all of a sudden I have invited lust in and lust is taking control of my life. It's ruining my life. It's destroying my life. There have been many people today, many people of our past who have been taken down by the spirit of lust. Whether they've been presidents, kings, queens, high political figures, entertainers, sports athletes, rich people, wealth people, they have been taken down all by one spirit, and that is the spirit of lust. People are holy, but they're still horny. How, how do I get past this name, Pastor? I'm saved. I'm sanctified. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. I, I speak in tongues. I sing under the anointing. Burdens are removed and yokes are destroyed. How in the world do I get this flesh under control? And this thing starts with you having a renewed mind and faith that you're going to have to change the way you think. That if you don't change the way you think, if you don't grab a hold of your mind, if you don't renew your mind, if you don't put your mind in check, your thoughts will be that of lust every day, all day. I did my research and I started to look at it. Um, and, 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 and the research says the average man thinks about sex 28 minutes, every 28 minutes. He thinks about, he thinks about sex every 28 minutes in a day. Every 28 minutes in a day, he thinks about sex. But then I'm looking at him saying, well, what about the women? It says the average woman speak, thinks of sex at least 18.6 times a day. So that means every 51 minutes, a woman thinks about sex. So almost every hour a woman thinks about sex, and almost every half an hour a man thinks about sex. And so I'm looking at this thing like, this thing is a mindset. This is a mindset. So watch now, in order for me to overcome this thing, I got to get my mind right. I got to shift how I think. I got to change how I think. If you don't change how you think, this thing will destroy you. It will destroy your entire life. It'll destroy your life savings. It'll destroy everything you built up. It'll destroy everything you work for. It'll destroy your marriage. It'll destroy your children. It'll destroy every single thing because you have not gotten your mind together. You got to get your mind together. There must, this is so crucial because most people think that just going to church is, is enough. Just sitting and listening to the word being preached is enough. No, you're going to have to put this stuff into practice. You're going to have to put into practice what you hear. You're going to have to make the decision that you're going to change your mind. So it starts with me having a renewed mind of faith. But at the same time, it also starts with me making a quality decision that I'm going to get past this, that I'm going to get past this because many times people don't make the quality decisions to get past it. See, what's now? See, lust is a heart matter. It, it's, it's something that is found in your heart. What's now? The Bible says, any man to look upon a woman to lust after her uh, have committed adultery in his heart already. So what's now? Lust is a heart matter, which means you've got to get your heart right. 
If my heart has not been right, if I don't renew my mind, if I don't transform my thinking, I can't get my heart right. If my heart is not right, I'm going to always constantly be thinking about sex. I'm going to always be thinking about sleeping with him. If I had a man, if I had a woman, when I get my husband, when I get my wife, this is what we're going to do. We're going to do this and I'm going to do that. You are in bondage to lust and that's your entire thought every single day, all day. See, here's how you know you're in bondage to lust. If, if you just happen to be somewhere and you're a woman and, and the most ugliest dude is, is coming around and the thought pop up in your head, would you sleep with him or not sleep with him? You ain't bondage to lust. If, if, if you're having a conversation with a man, with a woman, and, and the thought of sex pops up in your head concerning that individual, you ain't bondage to lust. If you are constantly talking about what you're going to do when you get married, what you're going to do with your husband, what you're going to do with your wife, you are in bondage to lust. And if you don't deal with this situation, you will destroy your marriage because you have a mental image of what you think a man is going to bring to the table to you. You got a mental image of what you think a woman is going to bring to the table to you. And you're going to miss out on every single thing because your mindset is going to be wrapped around nothing but sex. I'm holy, but I'm horny. How I get past this thing, man? How I get past this thing? And see, most people don't like to admit this. We think that because people go to church that they don't have no flesh issues. They don't have no flesh desires. We think that because people go to church because they sing in the choir, because they preach in the pulpit, because they deacons and ushers, that they don't have no challenge. Let me help you today. Anybody who lives in a flesh body will always have a sexual challenge. They will always have it, especially if you are single and viral and still want to be involved with somebody. You are going to have these thoughts. They are coming to you. They are coming after you. The devil is looking at you. He's coming for you. And if you haven't gotten a man and you're a beautiful woman, a nice looking man, and you haven't gotten a woman or something like that, the devil comes to you. He bombards your thoughts with this every single day. He bombards your thoughts with this. And you'll start to wonder, why why don't I, why don't I have something? Why don't I have this? Why don't I have that? So he's bombarding you with this thing every single day. So you have to get yourself together. You have to renew your mind because this thing starts in your heart. It starts in my heart. I got to renew my mind. I got to make a decision that I'm going to wage warfare against this thing. I, I'm going I'm, I'm, I'm to wage warfare against this. Because watch now, some of you have been fasting and praying and, and you ain't gotten free from it. Let's just be realistic. I put it on the table. Some of you been fasting and praying. You ain't gotten free from it. Some of you been taking cold showers and you ain't gotten free from it. So, some of you have turned the television off and you ain't gotten free from it. Some of you have tried to close yourself off and you ain't gotten free from it. And the reason that you haven't gotten free from it is because you haven't dealt with it as a heart issue. You have to deal with this thing as a heart issue. Watch now. Every man and every woman has to take responsibility. Hmm for this lustful spirit being in their life. A lot of times we don't want to take responsibility for it. So we got to take responsibility. See, there's got to be a responsibility that comes from the woman as well as a man. Now, what do you mean by this? See, usually lust can be seen on you. It, it's seen on you. It's, it's a part of your aura. It's the, it, you, it, it's the way you talk. It's the way you dress. It's the way you carry yourself. So watch now. Whatever you're willing to show, you're willing to share. Now, let me say it one more time. Whatever you are willing to show, you are willing to share. So, so if, you're willing to, if you're willing to wear stuff that's really, really skin tight and show all your goodness and mercy, that means you're willing to share it. Okay. See everybody. Well, but Pastor, I should be able to look sexy. You should be able to look sexy. But there's some things that ought to be left to the imagination. I, I shouldn't have to walk and see you and, and I see all your goodness and mercy. See, ladies, this is how you know your shirt, your skirt too tight. When you sit down and you stand up, you got to pull it down. That, that means that's too tight. That's a side too small. That, that one too tight. That's too small. You, you need to get another side. You understand? See, whatever you're willing to share, whatever you're willing to show, you're willing to share. So you're going to have to grab a hold of this because when you when you are bound by the spirit of lust, it's shown in your entire life. It's shown in the way you walk. It's shown in the way you talk. It's shown in the way you dress. It's shown in the way you carry yourself. Whatever you are willing to show, you're also willing to share. You, you got to grab hold of this. Gotta have a hold of this. See, you 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 can't be you can't be sharing it, showing it all if you don't want nobody to pay no attention to it. So watch now. I watch a lot of people get on social media, they take all the pictures, and I'm watching like you, you do know you have naked and you're showing all of your goodness and mercy on this thing, right? You do know that? 
and you're doing it because you want the likes, but the reality is not about the likes. It's the lust that, you're in, that, that has you in bondage. So whatever you're willing to show, you're willing to share. So here's what we got to do. We got to get past this thing, and we do it by the renewing of our mind. We do it now by making sure now that not only do we renew our mind, but we got to make a quality decision. You have to make a quality decision that you're going to be free from it. And to make a quality decision is a quality decision that's made with your heart. The Bible tells us in Daniel chapter number 1, and look at verse number 8. The Bible says, Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portions of the king's meat. He, 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 he made a quality decision with his heart. So in a sense now, you can say that your heart has quality or your heart has purpose. So your purpose now doesn't just lie in here, it lies in here. So I make a quality decision with my heart. So when you look at it, Daniel's purpose in his heart is saying that God, Daniel made a quality decision. Or Daniel made a decision to honor God with his heart. It's a decision that you have to make that you make with your heart. So watch now, when you make a heart decision, when you make a decision with your heart, you have just now made a quality decision that, in, that causes God to show up on the scene to help you. The reason that many people have not been helped, it is because you have not made a quality decision with your heart. You made it with your head. When you make a decision just with your head, it is not going to always help you because when I make a quality decision from my heart, I now allow God to show up, and now God has the opportunity to rescue me and to pull me up out of this. Let me help you today. You can't get free from, 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 from this thing. You can't get free from this thing by yourself. You need help. Let me say it to you again. You need help. You cannot get free from this by yourself. You need the help of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit is our helper. He's our standby. So watch now. He, he will stand by you until you ask for help. Okay? How do you know this? When, when I used to work in the, in, the, in the oil refineries, I used to work, and, and sometimes I work as a pipe fitter's assistant. Wasn't a pipe fitter, didn't know what he knows, but I'm his assistant. The assistant now helps to carry his tools, pass him the tools that he needs. When, when he says, hey, put this flange on this, you know, you stand up there and hold it. So watch now. If he didn't tell me what to do, I didn't have nothing to do. So all I did was stood there until he told me what he needed. Sometimes he would tell me, I got to go inside of this hole. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to stand by this hole, and I want you to stand by the hole with this fire stings, just in case something goes on. And so here's what he had. He would have this rope tied around him. So if he were to, to get asphyxiated because of the fumes in there, I could feel him when he dropped, and I could put him out of there. You understand what I'm saying? The Holy Spirit is ready to help you. He's your standby. He, he's, your, he's your paracletus. He's the person who's willing to help you, but he cannot help you until you ask for the help. There are many of you today, you are trying to wage warfare in here and not wage warfare from here. If you don't wage warfare from here, the Holy Spirit can't help you. You cannot overcome this thing by yourself. You can try it all you want to. You are not going to overcome it. Cold showers are not going to help you. Listen Listening to Oprah and all of these self-help gurus are not going to help you. You're going to have to get yourself in this world. You're going to have to change the way you think. You're going to have to make a quality decision with your heart. You're going to have to rely on the Holy Spirit for help. And when you rely on the Holy Spirit for help, he's going to be there for you. Listen, I had to wage warfare. I had to wage warfare because I understood the importance of what God had called me to. See, many of you right now, you don't understand your importance. You, 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 you don't understand your importance. See, when you get the revelation that you are important to the kingdom, when you are important to God, when you get this revelation that you are important to God, you will wage warfare. Here I am. I'm in bondage. Can't keep myself. I'm out of control. I'm about to go do something that's going to mess up me, that's going to embarrass me and embarrass my kingdom, embarrass the kingdom. So here I am. I, I got to get help. So what I did was I called Creflo Dollar Ministries and I called him, called the ministry. I said, listen, hey, I'm in trouble. I'm in bondage to, to, to lust. God has called me to be a pastor. I'm a minister right now, but I cannot get free from these lustful desires. I need your help today. I don't have no, buy, no money to buy, this, buy the cassette tapes that you got. But, but please, whatever you could do to help me. They tell me they got a cassette tape series that Dr. Dollar had just preached on lust. Uh, on lust about lust. And I said, I need it, but I don't have no money to buy it. They tell me they'll ship this thing to me. I get off the phone with them, and the first thing I, I, I get off the phone with that, that partner off, I call Kenneth Copeland Partners Ministry. 
I say that I'm in trouble. I'm in bondage to lust. I, I don't have no money to buy any CDs or cassette tapes that you got or any books you got. But whatever you can do to help me, please help me. So here's what they did. They told me they were going to send me a six cassette uh, series uh, from, from, from Kenneth Copeland's wife entitled Holiness, The Final Frontier. They told me they was going to send me a book on how to discipline my flesh. And so here's what they did. They sent it to me. They rushed it out to me. So all of a sudden, now within a week, I get both the, the cassette series from Creflo Dollar Ministries. I get the book and the other cassette series from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. It's almost like they came in the mail back to back from each other. So now all of a sudden, now, I got an option. I can sit here and let these books just sit on the mantle. I can take these cassette tapes and not listen to them at all. Or I can make a quality decision that I'm a wage warfare. So here's what I did. I started to wage warfare. I started reading the books. When I wasn't reading the books, I'm listening to the cassette tapes. I got the cassette tape uh, player that's got two cassette whales in it. And when this whale stops, this one flips over. When this one stops, this one flips over. I'm listening to the word of God all day, all night. I, I got a Walkman back in the day. I had a Walkman with a cassette tape player too. So as I'm, I'm going wherever I'm going, I got my headphones on, my Walkman with my cassette tape in there. I'm listening to this word every single day because I got to go to war. Listen to what I'm telling you. If you don't make the quality decision to go to war, if you don't make the decision to wage warfare against this spirit, it'll destroy your life. It'll destroy everything about you. It'll destroy your children. It'll destroy you. It'll destroy your money. It'll destroy everything you built up and you worked for. It'll destroy every single thing. And there are many of you today, you are listening to me, watching me today. You've been wearing this mask. You've been wearing these make this makeup to cover you. But the reality is you are sitting in church. Some of you are married. You are holy. And you are horny, and you have not been able to deal with this issue. I, I'm, I, I look at sometimes I look at my church, and I see that my church is ninety percent women. Large part of my ministry, my members are single. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that I got some single women in here who still viral, who still look good, who can still do what they do. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that they are in a fight that they are in a warfare, that they are no different than a man. They are in a warfare. But usually what happens is they can't come to us for help, for fear of us putting them down, for fear of people ridiculing them and talking bad about them. When is the church going to make a decision that, hey, we're going to love on people rather than bash people, that we're going to cover people, we're going to care for people, we're going to be there for them rather than putting them down and saying negative things about them. Everybody has challenges. Everybody got issues. Everybody goes through some things everybody goes through. There is not one person who attends church who does not have issues, who does not have challenges, but the majority of the issues and the challenges that are in the church is the people who are in there and they are horny and nobody is willing to support them and to help them. Now all of a sudden, now here comes a person telling you you can come free now and here's how you do. <laughs> so I had to wage warfare and waging warfare was not an easy thing. I had to do it. When I'm sleeping at night, I gotta hear this word. Throughout the day, I gotta hear this word. Everywhere I go, I gotta listen to this word. But then here's the other thing that I had to do, was keep myself out of situations that would hinder me. Now, let me say it again. I had to keep myself out of situations that would hinder me. See, see, many of you put yourself in situations that keep you thinking like this. You're waging warfare, you're trying to get free. You're trying to stay out of this because you understand that, that if I give in to this, I'm really letting God down. If I give in to this, I, I'm really denying and stopping me from getting to my next level. I understand that adultery going to cause me to go to hell. I understand the fornication going to cause me to go to hell. So nobody don't have to tell you, you already know this. And so here you are, you're in this situation. So you're waging warfare. I'm coming out. I'm gonna, not going to do this anymore. But then you find yourself back in it again because of the people that you associate yourself with. Let me help you. When you are in a faith fight, when you are warring against the flesh, you can't hang around other people. You have to shut yourself off. You have to come in and close doors on yourself. In a sense, you have to quarantine you because you are going to battle. You have to go to war. You can't hang out with sister so-and-so, brother so-and-so no more. You know what y'all do when y'all together. So you can't hang out with her. You can't go to the baby shower with her. You can't go to you can't go to this thing. You can't go out with her. You can't go here with her. You can't go there with him. You can't do this with them. Because if you do, you're going to find yourself back in this situation again. And before you know it, here you are, you're trying to, you're trying to fight, you're trying to battle, but he talking about sex and she talking about sex and 
What's going on in her house and what's going on over there? And girl, oh my God, girl, I did this. Oh man. So now all of a sudden you're being inundated with this stuff every day, all day. And you're trying to wage warfare. There is no way you will win this battle if you keep putting yourself in harm's way. It's a warfare. It's a fight. You have to make this quality decision. I got to renew my mind. I got to rely on the Holy Spirit. But I am not going to continue to keep putting myself in harm's way. Now, many of you today, you keep putting yourself in harm's way. You you can't keep hanging out with Boo Boo Kitty. You can't keep hanging out with Lanika Nell. You can't keep hanging out with, with Laquisha. You can't keep hanging out with these people when you're going through some stuff. You have to quarantine you until you can come out of this, until you can overcome this. There are many people today, you are watching me. Some of you are older saints. You are mothers on the motherboard, and you are still horny too, and nobody is, no, but you can't go to nobody and ask them to give you a rescue line. Today is your rescue line now. Take these principles today and bring yourself out of this thing. It's, listen, you ain't the only one with the challenge. You ain't the only one with the issue. You ain't the only one who wish that you had somebody. You're not the only one. There, there, there are people today who, 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 who get on, just, I almost want to say get on my last nerves with this crazy talk. You know, well, I just don't want anybody right now. It's just me and the Lord. If you don't stop with all that religious talk, God didn't create you to be alone. The Bible said man shall not be alone. So, so you were not created to be alone. You Listen, you, you were created for companionship. Let me say it to you again. You were created for companionship. You were created for it. You were not created to be alone. You were created for companionship. So you need to get this in your head. Well, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just holy. I'm just being, shut up. You were created, you were not created to be alone. In order for you to be alone in your life, you have to be anointed for that. And the majority of the people who are watching me today, you are not anointed to be alone. Paul was anointed to not be married. He was anointed not to be in this position. He was anointed for this. God didn't anoint you for this. So stop trying to be so religious. Stop trying to be so religious. You were not anointed for this. You were created for companionship. You were created to be touched. You were created to be cut to have conversation with. You were created to be talked to. You were created for this. But now you have no one. So what do I do, Pastor? You have to learn how to wage warfare to get yourself out of this trouble because if you don't, you will stay in it. But watch now. As you're going through this, you're going to have to get the word on the subject. What is it that I'm dealing with? I got to go find the word. <laughs> well, what do you mean? See, the Bible says, the horse have two daughters crying, give, give. There are three things that are never satisfied. Yea, four things say it's not enough. The Bible says, here's the three things that's, that doesn't say I'm satisfied. The Bible says the grave don't say I'm satisfied. A barren womb doesn't say I'm satisfied. And the Bible says, and, 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 and a fire that rages doesn't say I'm satisfied. It doesn't say I'm satisfied. So, so what is the Bible talking about? The Bible is telling you and I that lust is an addiction. See, see, see. We we look at we look when a person ODs on drugs or whatever, or they're addicted to alcohol or addicted to drugs or whatever. We just say they they got a drug addiction. But the Bible calls it a leech that sucks the very life out of you. So watch now. When a person ODs, that means that that spirit of lust has sucked the life out of them. It's drained them dry and moved on to the next person and done the same thing to them. Watch now, if you don't wage warfare with this, if you don't get the word on this subject that God has made me free from the law of sin and death, whom the Son make free is free indeed. If you don't get the word on this stuff, then the, then the Spirit will suck the very light out of you. Here I am now. I've been praying and I'm asking God to help me. God, help me, help me. Here I am. I'm driving one day from work. It's one Saturday morning around 6 or 7 o'clock in the morning. I'm driving from work. I never forget it. For those who are in Long Beach, you understand where I'm at. Here I am. I'm on the exit, the 22 freeway. I'm driving past Long Beach State. And God speaks to me. He tells me, he says, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the lust thereof. And I'm like, huh? Huh? I said, wait a minute. God can't speak that to me if there is no word for it and if I don't have the ability to do it. Okay? Now I got to go get the Bible. I go get the Bible, I go get the Bible, and I find out that it's written in the Scripture. Well, the Bible tells me, let not sin therefore reign over your mortal bodies. 
wait a minute, I'm in control. See, before I didn't know I was in control. Before I didn't know I had the power over this thing. I just thought that it was something that could control me. I didn't realize that I myself had the authority. So watch now. When you look at the Bible, it says in Romans chapter number 6, you start reading the verse number 12 through verse 14. Verse 12 says, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the lust thereof. I have the power not to obey it. Listen to this. When you gave your life to Christ, he empowered you. He didn't just empower you to speak in tongues. He didn't just empower you to jump, jerk, jiggle, and shout. He didn't just empower you to have church on Sunday. He empowered you to be in control or be the authority figure over everything that the devil throws at you. So that means you got control over your body. You have the control over it because God has given you and he's given you the help. The Holy Spirit lives in you. He is the empowerment of God. So here I am. I get home and I'm studying this thing. Then I start looking at it from the Amplified Bible. The Amplified Bible gives me a little bit more clarity. The Amplified Bible says it like this. Let not sin therefore rule as king in your mortal short-lived perishable bodies to make you yield to its craving and be subject to its lust and evil passion. Then it says, do not continue offering or yielding your, your, your bodily members and faculties to sin and instruments, tools of wickedness, but offer and yield yourselves to God as though you have been raised from the dead uh, to perpetual life and your bodily members and faculties to God, presenting them as implement, uh, implements of righteousness. For sin shall not any longer exert dominion over you, since now you are not under the law as slaves, but under the grace and subject of God's favor and mercy. When I started reading that, I said, wait a minute. Okay, I'm about to tap into some potential that I didn't know I had. So I'm studying now. I start getting into the message translation of the Bible. Message translation tells me, takes me to another level. Message translation said that, 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 that means you must not give sin a vote. Wait a minute. So, so when I let sin, when I let lust rule my life, that means I let it vote? I gave it a right to vote? See, watch now. When you give when you give lust the right to vote, that means you made you 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 created a democracy that lust has a voice. Wait a minute. Uh-uh. I can't give you no voice. I got to deal with this. I got to overcome this. I got to deal with this. And there are many of you right now, you are letting lust become king in your life. You are giving it a vote. It's running your life. It's controlling your life. Every, your every thought is sex. There's, how, see, there's some of you, I know you ain't running to lust because I see who you hang out with. I know you're in bondage to lust because I see who you date. I know you're in bondage to lust because I see what you listen to. Listen, some of you, you, you your own biggest snitch. You snitch on you. you. You on social media, you tell everything about you. If the police want to grab information about you, they ain't even got to go find your homies. They just go find you. You just tell everything about you. You put all your business on social media. Everything about you is on social media. If you're a person who loves to take a lot of pictures, here you are. Uh, they're all over social media. What you telling everybody? I love to take pictures. I'm addicted. I'm addicted to this thing. I need some likes. I need this. You are putting your own business out there. So you have to make a decision. I am not going to allow lust to rule my life. I'm not going to let it be king. I'm not going to give it no vote. This is not a democracy. This is a monarchy. A monarchy means God is in control of this thing. Not me, not you. I'm submitting myself to the will of God. Until you make this quality decision that you're going to submit yourself to the will of God, you are never going to overcome this. You will constantly be sitting in church, saved, sanctified, and that would fight and still holy, I mean holy and still horny. Late at night, making a phone call for bro to come by, for G-Rock to show up. You don't love G-Rock, you don't wanna be involved with bro, man, you don't want it to have nothing to do with him, you just need him to come over here and, and, and do a few things for you at this moment, for you to get, for you to get this release. And then once, he, once he's done, he, he, hey, get on up out of here, go on, go on somewhere. And now he's gone now. And you left with the guilt, the condemnation, and the shame because you couldn't get this thing together. Please let me help you this morning. The Bible said, whom the Son make free is free indeed. You've been made free. You got to know you've been made free. You got to make a decision that you're going to wage warfare. You got to also look at yourself and stop condemning yourself because you sinned. There are a lot of people who listen to me today. You, you in church, you're going to fight for God. But, but every now and then you give in. You give in to the flesh. You give in to it. And you give in to it. And at this moment, it's feeling good for you. But when it's all over, you carry the guilt. You carry the condemnation. You carry the shame. 
You can't sleep during the, during the night. You, you, you're frustrated. You're wondering if God going to kill you. If this going to take place, the devil is just bombarding your thoughts every single day. And you don't even realize that God took the handcuffs off of you. That he's not going, he doesn't want to kill you. But he wants to love you. He don't want to destroy you. He don't want guilt and condemnation to be on you. But what he wants to do is to love you. And so now you can't even hit, you can't even tap into his love because you're wearing the guilt. Today is the day you get free. Today is the day you make this quality decision. Man, I'm going to do more than be holy and horny. For some of you, you think that getting married is the cure-all for a lust problem. Let me help you today. Marriage is not the cure-all for a lust problem. It is not the cure-all for a lust problem. If you are in bondage to lust and you marry somebody, they will never be enough for you. They will never, they will never ever satisfy you at the level you need to be satisfied because the issue is within you. It's within you. I don't care. You could be with this guy every day. He could be in, he, y'all could be doing the do three, four times a day. It will never be enough for you. You will always find something that he didn't do, something she didn't do, something that didn't work right, something didn't hear. It's because you have a self-esteem issue. It's in your heart. You have to get this issue dealt with. Marriage is not the cure all for a sex problem. You shouldn't even get married if you got a lust problem. Let me just say it to you again. You shouldn't even get married if you got a lust problem. One more time, I'm going to say it again. You shouldn't even get married to anybody. If you got a lust problem, if you don't learn to possess your vessel before you get married, you will not be able to possess it after you get married. And as soon as he doesn't satisfy you the way you want to be satisfied, as soon as she doesn't satisfy you the way you want to be satisfied, it's the moment your attention gets drawn somewhere else. And so now you're looking at somebody else. You're looking at something else. And your mindset is on that. Listen, marriage is not the cure all for it. The Bible uses, the Bible says the devil uses it. He entices you. The Bible said every man is drawn away of his own lust. Every man is enticed and drawn away of his own lust. James tells us this. So watch now. If, if my eyes are moving away from my husband, my wife, it is because something is going on in here. Every man is drawn away and enticed. Every man is drawn away with his own lust and enticed. So it's not a God thing. It's a you thing. So now all of a sudden, because you're not getting satisfied at home the way you want, now all of a sudden you're, you're, you're going over here. I should never marry her. I should have never married him. So your thought process is over here. It's over there. Let me help you today. It can't be the cure-all for your relationship. It can't be the cure-all. You have to have this thing under control before you get married. Because if you don't get it under control, you do your spouse an injustice and a disservice. So now the marriage is for naught because you didn't get this thing under control. I'm talking to somebody. I'm talking to people for from experience because if nobody, if, if, if you don't hear this in, you, you're probably not going to hear this in church, but I'm going to have to tell you so you can grab a hold of this because in this quarantine environment, people become bored. People become frustrated. And now you're in the house and all of a sudden your thoughts are everywhere. I got to have something. I got to have somebody. So listen, I got a couple minutes, then we're going to get out of here and be done with this. See, you got to go to war. You got to go to war with this thing. If you don't go to war with this thing, you will be stuck. So watch now. I'm going to get God's word on this thing, but guess what else I'm going to do? I'm going to obey God's word. See, it's one thing to get the word. It's another thing to obey it. I watch a lot of people, they come to church, they take so many notes. They probably got books and books and books of notes that they have taken in church from down through the years. But I wonder how many of them go home, study those notes, put those notes into practice. I wonder how many of them do that. See, it's one thing to write it down. It's another thing to put this stuff into practice. If you don't put what you studied into practice or what you heard into practice, it does you no good. You just got notebooks full of notes. How long are you going to be before you get free from all of this, before you make the decision that, hey, I'm going to put into practice. Not only am I going to hear the word, but I'm going to obey this word. Listen, it's important for you to obey the word. So not only am I going to obey this word, <laughs> But I'm a, I said we're going to rely on the Holy Spirit's help. He's the only one that's going to spare. He's the only one that's going to help us. But then that's what the other thing I'm going to do. I'm going to stay in God's presence. I'm going to stay in God's presence. See, when you're in this warfare, you can't be hanging out with your friends and you know that they're doing whatever they do. You can't hang out with them. You got to stay in God's presence. How do I stay in God's presence? I'm going to continue to keep listening to the word. I'm going to keep listening to praise and worship music. I'm going to keep fasting. I'm going to keep praying. I'm going to keep praising God. I'm going to keep myself in his, in his presence. 
I'm going to stay in God's presence. Please, people, do, you have to stay in God's presence. If you don't stay in God's presence before you know it, you're rolling up one again. See, that's a form of love. I'm trying to calm my nerves. I got to roll me one. I got to drink me one. See, you got to put this stuff in the practice. You got to stay in God's presence. If you don't stay in God's presence, you will constantly smoke one. You will constantly drink one. You will constantly be with him. You will constantly be with her. You will constantly keep doing this stuff over and over again, and condemnation and guilt will set in on you, and now all of a sudden, you don't want to come to church again. You don't have nothing to do with church again, not because the church did anything to you, but because you're wearing this guilt and this condemnation. You're wearing it like an outfit. Today is the day you pull this thing off. You got to pull it off today. But then, not only am I going to stay in God's presence, but I'm going to go a step further in this thing too, but I'm going to cast down imagination. Casting down imagination means that every thought that comes into my mind that is not in, not in God's line, not in the line with God's word, I'm going to snatch that thing down. So the Bible tells us, casting down every imagination and every thought. It says, bring it into captivity. Or bring it into the obedience of word, God's word. So any thought that comes into my head, if it's not in line with the word of God, I'm snatching that thing down. How do I snatch that thing down? I rebuke it. Satan, you're not, Satan, you're not going to, I'm not going to act on those thoughts. You're not going to make me do that. I'm not going to have, I'm not going to do it. You have to rebuke that and bring it into captivity. Bring it into captivity means to make this word, make the thought obey God. What did God say about the matter? How does he feel about the matter? So I am going to cast down imagination. I am not going to allow myself to think thoughts that are not in line with the will of God. And some of you might be saying, but pastor, how do I stop myself from thinking thoughts like that? You can't stop the devil from bringing thoughts to you, but you don't have to obey them. Listen, it's not a sin for a thought to come into your head. It's a sin when you act on the thought or you obey the thought. You don't have to obey the thought. The devil, is, the devil will bombard you with thoughts all day long. He'll do it all day long. But that does not mean you have to obey the thought. I mean, I, I, I wonder how many of you have had the thought, I'm going to slap her in the mouth. I'm going to slap him in the mouth. If, if he says one more thing, I'm going to knock him out. The thought came into your head to do it, but you didn't act upon it. So, so watch now. It's not a sin to have the thought. The sin is when you act on the thought. So you got to rattle, you got to reel this thing in. You got to bring this thing in. I bring it into captivity. I arrest the thoughts. Because it doesn't obey God. And guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to sentence the thought. I'm not going to give the thought the opportunity to be free to run rapid in my life. If I let the thought run rapid in my life, then that thought will eventually grow up. All the devil wants to do is to drop seeds. Because he understands if seeds get, thought, get dropped, then guess what's going to end up happening? The seed will grow. Every seed is designed to produce the devil knows it. It's a spiritual principle and a natural principle. So the devil knows it. So here's what he'll do. Drop the seed. And if you're not careful, if you don't eradicate the seed, get rid of the seed, the seed will grow up and it will produce. And now you're stuck because you're dealing with this thing. Please hear me today. It's important for you to get this. Let me hurry up and close with this. I got a lot of principles to deal with this, but I got to hurry up and just close with some of these right here. See, it's important for you to understand this. See, see, what you're sensitive to, you think about. And what you think about, you figure out ways to make happen. Say it to you one more time. What you are sensitive to, you think about. And what you think about, you figure out ways to make happen. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Some of y'all are like, what, Pastor? What you are sensitive to, you think about. And what you think about, you make ways to happen. So you got to make sure, and man, I ain't sensitive to these thoughts. I'm going to become sensitive to the word of God. I'm going to become sensitive to the Holy Spirit because to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit means that it helps me. It helps me. If I am not sensitive to the Holy Spirit, then I'm going to be sensitive to other thoughts. Whatever you are sensitive about, you think about. And whatever you think about, you're going to figure out ways to make happen. So if you're constantly thinking about sex, that means you are sensitive to it. You can sense a person in an audience who have the same spirit as you. You can sense it when you got this spirit on you. They'll let you know who's who, and you ain't never have to have a conversation with them or not. That's why people who are homosexual can spot another homosexual in a crowd. 
The person can dress up and look just like a man, as just like a man, look like a woman, dress like a woman, but another Holy Spirit, another normal homosexual can spot them. They can spot them because the same spirit is on them. Let me hurry up and get ready to close with this. It's important now for you to get this. It's listen, you gotta get this. Whatever you are sensitive to, you think about. And whatever you think about, you figure out ways to make happen. <laughs> I know, I know some of y'all are like, oh my God, he's way down my street now. See, watch now. When you reject God <laughs> to accept the lustful lifestyle, you are in danger of losing your salvation. When, when you reject God to accept the lustful lifestyle, you are in danger of losing your salvation. Okay. What do you mean, Pastor? See, when people accept the homosexual lifestyle, they're in danger of losing their salvation. Because it's a decision that you have to make. You don't have to choose to be homosexual. You don't have to. It's a decision that you make. What's up? If I accept this lifestyle, if I accept the lustful lifestyle, if I accept this, I'm in danger of losing my salvation because God comes along and he warns us. Here's what he says. If you don't want to retain me in your knowledge, if you, don't re if you don't want to come to know who I am, and you keep wanting this lifestyle, he says, God says, I'll give you over to a reprobate mind. Reprobate mind means, man, you done made a decision now. You, you, done, made, you done made a decision. Your decision that you made has nothing to do with God anymore. You have told God, this is what I choose to do. This is who I am. This is why I'm doing it. And you made your decision. So God says, there's no more I can do. I can't change your mind anymore. I made the decision to try to change your mind, but you will not let me change your mind. So now you're stuck with it. You're in danger of losing your salvation. It's important for you to understand this. There's some of you who are watching me today. You may have children who are in this lifestyle. You loving your children, you caring for your children, you praying for your children. And now because your child is battling or your child has made a decision, here you are, you carrying this guilt and condemnation. Today is the day you stop carrying the guilt and the condemnation. You stop carrying the guilt and the condemnation. It's not on you. You gotta stop carrying it today, you gotta let it go. It doesn't mean that you go home and beat up your child or, or ridicule your child or throw your child out the house because your child is battling. You keep battling for your child. God made a promise to you that he would save you and your household. He made a promise to you. So you keep putting God in remembrance of his word. God, you said, you said, you said, you keep putting him in remembrance of his word. God has to honor his word. Don't go home and belittle your children, ridicule your children and belittle and put them out and throw them out and beat them up and all this type of stuff because they're battling. They're battling in here. You got to help them. You don't ostracize them and criticize them, but at the same time, because they're your children, you don't give in to that either. And now that's where many of you make your mistakes at, is that you give in to your child's lifestyle. In my house, I'm not giving in to your lifestyle. Just not going to happen, no way, shape, form, or fashion. You and your boyfriend, if you're a boy, you and your boyfriend can't come over here and hang out. That ain't not happening in my house. If you're a girl, you and your girlfriend, y'all not coming over here and hanging out. No, that's not going to happen. That don't mean that dad don't love you. Dad going to love you unconditionally, put my arms around you, going to be there for you. But dad is not accepting the lifestyle. They're not accepting the lifestyle. Dad love you, accept you, but you can't bring your boyfriend over here. You can't bring your girlfriend over here. Y'all not finna be sitting up in my house on the living room couch, hanging out, all this type of stuff. The devil is no, not up in here. Because if I let that happen, I'm giving into that desire. Not doing it. I don't, people on here can be mad at me all you want to. Do you, whatever you want to do, you can't do that. I am not giving into that lifestyle. I'm going to keep peace. I'm going to retain peace in my home. Not going to accept it. I am not going to accept it at all. Whatever you do, you do. Doesn't mean I'm going to stop loving you because I'm not. I'm not going to stop loving you. I'm going to keep loving you. Whatever you need, Dad, going to help you. He's going to rescue you. He's going to do the best he can for you. But you can't bring it up in here in front of them and face, I can't do it. I ain't going for it. Just not going to go for it at all. In the same way, if I got a son and he got a girlfriend, y'all can't come up in here and sleep in my house. You what? what? You can't come up in here and tell me we're going to spend the night. No. We ain't rolling like that up in here. I am not indulging in your lifestyle. I'm not going to. It's not going to happen. You can't. Uh, my daughter can't bring her boyfriend up in. Y'all gonna spend. Now, I got daughters who got boyfriends and things like that. Hey, got some grandkids by them. Y'all come over here and visit. All that kind of stuff. Uh, but but Reverend got his eyes on you. Got his eyes on you. 
big time, 1,000%. Y'all ain't spending no night. Y'all ain't finna do none of that. You know what I'm saying? Not up in here. Y'all, if y'all want to live together, go live together. What you do? But up in here, no, I ain't giving into that lifestyle. I'm not, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. It's, it's a quality decision that has to be made. When you make that decision, I'm going to let my boy, my, my son and his girlfriend live in here. What you doing? You're opening up the house for lust to run rapid in the house. I'm, I'm going to let my, my daughter and her boyfriend live up in here. You're opening up the door for lust to just run rapid in your house. They ain't got no place to stay. Well, you can bring your daughter home. You can bring your son home. But, but he ain't stay here. She can't stay here. You understand? See, see, we've been giving in too long. We've been giving in to this stuff for too long. We've been accepting the lifestyle. We've been accepting like it's not a problem. It is a problem. If you're going to be a Christian, be a Christian today. If you're going to live for God, live for God. If you're going to be 1,000% for God, be 1,000% for God. Be 1,000% for him. Who is really on the Lord's side today? And there are not many of you are on the Lord's side. You go to church. You jump, jerk, jiggle, and shout, and holler, he ta ta and all this stuff. But you ain't really on the Lord's side for real. You got to make a quality decision. I'm going to be on the Lord's side. It's just that simple. So it's some decision that I have made. Just a decision I've made. I can't tell nobody else what to do with their house. But I'm telling you, don't give in to sin. Don't co-sign it. I'm not co-signing it. I, I'm not going. You, I'm not going to your wedding. You, you, you two men. I'm not going to your wedding. I'm not marrying you. I'm not going to the wedding of two women. I'm not marrying you. I'm not doing that. I'm an agent of the kingdom. I have to do what the kingdom says do. I prefer the kingdom over my children. I prefer the kingdom over my wife. I prefer the kingdom over everything else. I'm gonna stick with the kingdom. It doesn't mean that I'm gonna criticize, ridicule, belittle, put down. None of that. Not gonna treat treat they they they, they person with any dishonor, disrespect, but I'm gonna stay with the kingdom because this is who I am, this is what I'm supposed to do. I know I'm past my time today, but I'm trying I'm trying to help our people today. I'm trying to help our people today. Many people today are holy, but they're horny. And and nobody is helping them to get rid of this. People are trying to suppress this thing. You can't suppress this thing. Anything you suppress is eventually going to come out. You got to do more than suppress it. You got to get rid of it. If you don't get rid of it, it's going to destroy your entire life. There are many people today who have been brought down, the Bible says, to like a piece of bread because they couldn't get this thing under control. <laughs> I done been longer than what I normally, normally do, but I'm trying to help people today. Listen, if you were blessed by this today, hey, just let me know you were blessed by it. Oh, uh, man, I, I just... <laughs> Got too much on my head. Too much, too many thoughts in dealing with this. See, whatever you think about, you're going to figure out ways to make happen. So you got to learn to bring your thoughts into obedience to the word of God. You got to bring your thoughts into obedience to the word of God. You have to do that. See, listen, whatever you don't think about, you don't figure out ways to make happen. So if I ain't thinking about lust, I ain't going to figure out no way to make happen. Now, some of you may have... Let, let me just put this thing out here right now really quick before I go. Some of you got children living in your house and maybe they got their boyfriends living with them. Or maybe you got a you got son, he got his girlfriend living there with you. Don't you go in the house and put all them people out, all right? You, you don't go in there and say, okay, y'all get out. I heard Pastor Perry today, y'all get out. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't go in there and throw these people out your house now. What you got to end up doing now is you got to sit down and you got to say, this is how my house is going to be. This is how we're going to live. I'm giving you 30 days. You got to find a place. Okay. Now I'm going there and just throw you if you got your if you got your daughter and she got a girlfriend and they all living in there. Don't you go in there and just throw them people out of the house because that's just abrupt. You ain't you ain't giving them no time to figure that now. You gotta put time to them. Hey, I'm gonna give you 30 days now. Uh, this, this is how we living up in here. This is how I choose to live. And then you then you make a decision from there. Don't just go home and throw four, four people out now and you ain't sat down and have a conversation with them. All right, that's what's important. <laughs> Let me get ready to get out of here. Let's pray. I'm praying for everybody today. Everybody today, because everybody is dealing with some form of lustful problem. Some, everybody's dealing with something. But I'm especially praying for those people today who are on here. You are holy. You saved, you sanctified, but you are horny. And you, you have not been able to control this flesh. Maybe I'm not going to ask you to, 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 to say if it's you. I want to pray for you personally. Hey, if you want to send me a private message and say this is you, that you want me to pray for you personally, I will do that and not divulge who you are. 
It's not my style. It's not my get down. All right. But I'm praying for you today. All right. Shout out to Frank Marion, who's on today. Miss Edna Powell is on today. Shout out to Thomas. He's rocking with us this morning, too. Good to see you, Miss. Uh, Mr. James Jackson is with us today. My auntie Dorothy Perryman is on today. Good to see you. Thank you so much for being on. Miss Marucky Yates is on today as well. So let me pray. All right. I'm praying for you. All right. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every person who may be dealing with this issue today, who, who say is sanctified, but who has their flesh out of control and they're trying their best. There are some who are watching me today, God, who are carrying a guilt tag, sin tag, and condemnation tag on their lives because they gave into this spirit. But I ask today that you would help them to remove the sin tag, the lust tag. I ask that you would help them to remove the, the condemnation tag, that they would be free today because of your grace. For every person, God, who's embarrassed by the things that have taken place in their lives, I ask in Jesus' name that you would comfort them, that you would keep them, and that you would deliver them today. I pray now in Jesus' name, God, that your love would permeate through their lives right now, that it would just cause a shift in their lives today. And Lord, I thank you. Now, Father, I ask that you would help them through the power of the Holy Spirit to maintain and sustain Help them to stay before you and continue to keep asking you to help them, God. And, Lord, I give you praise and glory for it. Now, Father, I lift up the country of Belize. I pray for every Belizean citizen. I pray for your peace and prosperity, your healing, and your deliverance over their lives today. I pray for my town, Itabina, Mississippi. I pray for my town's peace and prosperity, my town's healing and deliverance. I pray that your grace and mercy will cover my town today. And, Lord, I release your grace and mercy over the Delta now. In Jesus' name, Amen and amen. All right, listen, I got to give somebody their day today. Got to give somebody their day today. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, my God. It, today is a wonderful day. It really is a wonderful day today. Today is Mr. James Jackson's day. Today is Mr. James Jackson's day. Today is Mr. Frank Marion's day. Whatever they want, they get. Whatever they need, get supplied. It is their day. And today is Miss Sharonda Powell's day. Whatever she wants, she gets. Whatever she needs, get supplied. It's their day today. So love on them. Appreciate them. Show them some love. All right. I appreciate it. All right. Let me get off this thing today. Hey, if this message has been a blessing to you, get your seed in the ground today. Hey, we've been encouraging you, motivating you. Get your seed in the ground today. All right. I appreciate y'all. Shout out to Clint Powell. Shout out to Miss Shakira James, who's on today. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hey, if you got private questions or whatever you want to ask, hey, you can always message me. I do my best to ask your question according to the word of God. All right. Never my thoughts, never my opinion, but I do my best to answer them according to the word. All right. So love y'all. Appreciate y'all. Shout out to Tony Johnson. He be the man. Um, Tony Johnson is, he's cooler than a fan in the wintertime. <laughs> so shout out to him. <laughs> Let me get up the stage, but get your seed in the ground today. Go to our website, kingdomlifefavecenter.org. Click on the online giving button there and get your seed in the ground today. All right. Shout out to Minister Kim Simmons. Shout out to Miss Sheila T. Roby today. Miss Jackie Hankins is on today. Shout out to you guys. Appreciate y'all. But again, get your seed in the ground. Go to our website, kingdomlifefavecenter.org. Click on the online giving button there and get your seed in the ground. Or if you want to sow directly to me, you can do it through the Cash App. The Cash App is the dollar sign, Pastor Perryman. Again, the Cash App is the dollar sign, Pastor Perryman. Get your seed in the ground today. We appreciate you for doing so. All right. So love y'all. Y'all be blessed. We'll see y'all again uh, tomorrow morning. And uh, Byron Williams and Robert Perryman, it's always Ain't Dot's day. It's always Ain't Dot Dorothy Perryman's day. Whatever she wants. Y'all make sure y'all gonna make it happen for Ain't Dot. Whatever she wants. All right. Love y'all. Y'all be blessed in Jesus' name.